In this very short video, we'll take a look at the rename function contained in dprior, which of course, as the name implies, is used to give different names to columns. So rename is the function. So here, there is a column called tail num in the table already, and we want to rename it as tail underscore num. The reason we want to do this renaming is that uh, every other column, like for example, you've already seen columns like arrival delay, departure delay, scheduled departure time, etc. In all of those column names, the individual words are separated with underscores. Okay, Just for whatever reason, this column alone is not following that convention and we are saying, let's just do that. So we are just renaming the column. It has no other effect other than changing the name of the column. The contents of the column obviously remain completely unchanged. So when you do this, you see, of course, that there's this column called, it, it used to be tail num like this. It has now become tail underscore num. Okay. The only thing to remember here is that the left-hand side contains the new name and the right-hand side contains the old name. That's the only serious thing to remember. There's really nothing else to remember here. Okay. Now, you can also do rename while you select. So, for example, I'm selecting from the flights table the column year and the column called tail num. But while selecting the tail num column, I'm giving it a different name. And while selecting the year column, I'm giving it a different name. You could do that also if this is what you need to do for certain contexts. So typically what you might do is you have a table, you're selecting a subset of the table in terms of its columns and putting the result into another table. At that time in the new table, you want to see different column names. So you might adopt this method. Okay, so since we selected only two columns, those are the only two columns we are seeing here. And of course, the column names are as we wanted them. 